Hello and welcome to Wellness Wednesday. I'm James Curry with the Communications Department. I'm talking to Stephen Shotgun. He is a behavioral health provider here at MCHD and Family Health. Uh, Stephen and I have spoken previously about specific topics during the holiday season. Um, now we're going to focus just on holiday depression. So Stephen and I are going to be speaking about stress, fatigue, unrealistic expectations that people may have, financial stress from spending too much on gifts, social isolation, COVID-19, and holiday grieving, and also SAD. So Stephen, take it away. All right, well, it is a stressful time of year. We all know that. We also have some added stress with the, uh, the quarantine and the increased isolation. And a lot of times with this time of year, you get the SAD, which is seasonal affective disorder. And that is due a large part uh, due to the weather, you know, not getting out as much because it's colder. So we get less sunlight and that tends to increase levels of depression. So that's easily enough remedied by getting outside, getting a good, you know, night's sleep, and trying to reduce stress as much as possible. Yeah, this year is so, I, I would venture out to say, so very atypical for the holiday season. I'm, I've been looking back at holiday 2019, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, uh, in, in every single bit that goes along with it, like Black Friday shopping and holiday travel and everything else, and it's overwhelming this year. It is. It's it's funny the things that we miss. For example, Black Friday shopping used to be something that's extremely stressful, and now a lot of us miss those things that we used to dread. A sign of the times, I guess. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of uh, what I read about too, and you can go into detail a little bit about it, but holiday grieving where something has changed in your family dynamic in the last 12 months. Maybe you've lost a family member from death or divorce or something, and your whole family dynamic has changed and you're grieving because of that loss. So can you go into that a little bit? Yeah, grief, grief and loss are uh, pretty common now, or I'm sorry, during this time of year, because a lot of us remember the holidays as the time where we would, in past, spend time with loved ones, and if we're not able to be with those loved ones, either through death or even through increased isolation, uh, it we do have that sense of loss, so we need to combat that with sometimes just substituting other activities which, you know, bring us happiness. Could be making new family traditions, you know, if you're able to get out and do things. It doesn't necessarily mean that you break the rules of quarantine, but even going off and um, saying having a, having a picnic if the weather permitting, uh, rather than just stay at the house or getting outside, you know, keeping social distancing. Again, getting outside is, is key to mental health that a lot of people don't realize. I, I know that those family traditions and holiday traditions are very important and it's we're so entrenched into those things that are just so familiar to us from year after year so um, give us something else to go on based on that. Well um, volunteering can be good you know if you're able to and you know, again, following the guidelines, able to volunteer, get out, uh, spend time with people who otherwise wouldn't have, you know, somebody come in and visit them during the holidays or serve meals. A lot of people volunteer during Thanksgiving and Christmas to serve meals to the homeless or to the, those that are less fortunate. So that is another good way to um, spend time with other people. And, you know, not only does it reduce your isolation, but you're helping someone else out. And if you can do this with the kids, even better because you're instilling them in them at a young age, uh, a life of service. Uh, expanding a little bit also too on holiday traditions, maybe, you know, the same family members are the ones that cooked every year. And they're also the ones that are 
exhausted like right after the meal you know and they eat and then they sleep for the rest of the day so you know what do you think about maybe sharing the responsibilities of some of those things absolutely um for example if you have somebody like me that can't cook i can definitely clean it's okay to uh relegate authority to, to other people to help clean up if i cook you clean or if you you clean i cook or however that works for your family dynamic, but include everybody. It can be a family activity. Yeah, that's, I, I think that's, that's kind of important too. I mean, you know, it's stressful enough as it is and people get overwhelmed with thinking that they have to do every single bit of it. So, you know, I would say, you know, what do you think about having a plan? Like, you know, there are gonna be 12 people at your house give everyone a chore and a task, maybe even make a list of it, put on the fridge. So kids know, okay, we're setting the table and we're doing this and we're, you know, what do you think about Absolutely. that? Yeah, if you can plan everything out, that's, that should help reduce stress because everybody knows the role. And so, you know, after the meal, we know who's going to collect the dishes. We know who's going to wash the dishes and everything is structured. Structure tends to reduce stress and anxiety. I've got some other notes here to ask you about. Um, what about making time for yourself? Oh, absolutely. Self-care is key for mental health and to reduce stress. Um, so if you can actually sit down and plan time for self-care, even if it's just five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to where you don't have those external uh, stimuli of children, spouse, partner, relative, and just take some time, do something that you enjoy that's healthy, and recharge the battery, so to speak, and then you can come back into the holiday season, so to speak. So to speak. Mm -hmm. Something else that keeps reoccurring year after year is the remorse that people have when they overspend at the holidays where they feel like they have to buy a certain number of gifts or a certain number of things. And then January arrives with the bills. So um, can you go over that a little bit? Oh, absolutely. It's something that we should live by uh, throughout the year and that's a budget. If we know we have a set amount of money to spend and we have so many people to buy for, then we stick to the budget. That way there's no remorse at the, uh, at the start of the new year. It's not a very productive way to, to begin a new year with more bills than we left with, left the last year. So proper planning and also thinking, okay, do I really need to buy my coworker or somebody that I don't know that well a gift? Or do I need to spend money on something? Would somebody prefer a homemade gift? you know, that doesn't cost as much money. Mm -hmm. So you know, planning is key. You know, something that I just thought of too, which would be good. Um, you've got your family around. Everyone has their smartphone. What about recording some family videos, maybe with an elderly family member that, you know, may not be around this time next year. So, Maybe that could be given as a gift to, you know, record those videos onto DVD or something like that to, I don't know, just an idea. Absolutely. And it costs nothing. Yet it's one of those priceless things. That's very good. That's starting a new tradition. So, and it, it creates those memories that we're able to look back on and go, oh yeah, you remember when, and then you can look at the video or as you're watching the video, you have those remembrances of good times. So that, that would be a very good positive idea. I mean, I just thought of that. Uh, so yeah, you know, home movies and, and things like that um, to go forward, obviously. A um, couple of other notes that I had here too. Um, spending time with supporting, supportive and caring people and to reach out and make new friends. So can you expand on those two ideas? Well, it would be a little bit easier if we weren't under the current circumstances, yeah. but there are a lot of virtual uh, groups, mm -hmm. not only support groups, but there are also just friendship groups, um, message boards, things like that. 
and you can reach out and find people of similar interest and discuss those interests. So that is another way to spend positive time without you know risking violating the quarantine and social distancing guidelines. I think that's what I was getting at in my notes. Um, look for those online, you know, virtual things. So thank you for filling in the blanks on that. Um, you talked about self-care. So I guess the last thing for us to talk about too is, um, you know, limiting alcohol and things like that. Absolutely. Um, if we're put into a situation and we imbibe too much, not only do we have the physical uh, repercussions, but also if we're in an environment with family, loved ones, where there are toxic relationships or toxic people, because I would dare to say most of us have those in families in varying degrees, we either need to limit our exposure to those people and probably limit the amount of alcohol. Uh, because, again, you know, it's hard to say, it's impossible to unsay things. So alcohol um, tends to loosen the, the tongue, not only the, the physical aspects and negative repercussions of alcohol, but also the emotional. So yeah, alcohol is probably one of those things we need to really keep an eye out on or just decide not to drink. Well, thank you for all of that information. I, I think we covered a lot of these um, these things we we're going to talk about for holiday depression as we get close to Thanksgiving and Christmas and the end of the year. Um, so if somebody needs to reach out to you, they just need someone to talk to or they're looking for a counselor, can you please give us your contact information? Uh, yes, sir. It's 251-690-8193. Okay, and that's Stephen with Family Health. Yes, sir. All right, anything else you'd like to add about uh, holiday depression? Uh, not so much about depression, but also this time of year, there tends to be an increase in uh, alcohol consumption and getting behind the wheel of a car. Get a designated driver, call Uber, call Lyft, call somebody. Um, great, great idea. Thank you for adding that. Um, that is very important also too. So yeah, we, we don't want anyone to be a statistic for sure. Um, Stephen, thank you again for your time. I know we've got some other topics here scheduled uh, towards the end of the year. So I just want to thank you again for coming on and um, uh, helping the viewers uh, with some of this information. Yes, sir. My pleasure. Thank you.